Okay, let's uh, step on to part three on Ansel Adams' zone system. I'd like to make this really simple. Now, as an example from last month's contest, where we basically had 15% roughly of the picture uh, of the image created, illuminated, and everything else black, now, some of you ran into an issue of tonal compression, and that is where your mid-tones uh, were just sludged out, and uh, you ran into issues on exposure. Now, uh, all the molestation of your images uh, within Photoshop or whatever application you use can only do so much, and they certainly can't bring out blown highlights. Now, if you look at this image that I've created here, um, actually the perfect tonal range of uh, skin texture is, uh, if we were to imagine this in uh, black and gray, would uh, be this sea urchin I have poised here. Now, I have a highlight up here, and it is basically four stops above some of the stamps I dabbed down here in the right hand corner on this uh, slate chalkboard. There's also some writing on the carved into the wooden frame of the chalkboard down here, and here we have uh, uh, Ansel Adams uh, zone system right here uh, with 11 values. We have a dynamic range of 9, but we have a textural range of 7. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down at ISO 800 uh, expose perfectly spot metering right here on the the edge of uh, the highlighted uh, part of this white bottle and then I'm going to do some shots and the important part to take away from this is is that yes Ansel Adams zone system is specifically applicable to digital photography Ansel Adams when he died in the 80s he actually made a comment that it is exactly applicable and something you need to realize that there's no such thing as digital photography, okay? Digital is a means of recording and a means of, uh, of uh, that recording storage, okay? Nobody on earth has ever seen a digital photograph. So when it comes to photography, while our capture and recording system have obviously vastly improved and changed, there's no such thing as a digital photograph. So no such thing as digital music either. I mean, we record in digital MP3 or whatever FLAV format that we want, but human experience necessitates if we're going to enjoy our music and our art vis-a-vis -vis photographic arts and the images that you've created or the moments that you've captured, as the case may be, we still have to consider the tonal range of what is there, what it is you intend to capture, and uh, Here's a quick story. There's a local photographer, and she's actually quite famous. She doesn't actually do a tremendous amount of uh, shoots, so she's not like insanely busy, but she makes a lot of her income. She's just one example out of countless photographers. And uh, she destroyed her Canon, which, uh, bless her heart, uh, the shutter actually went uh, two and a half times uh, what it was rated for. But she blew it in a year and a half, and she put almost 600,000 clicks on the shutter. You think, oh my god, she's a busy shooter. Now, she practiced what I have affectionately called douchebag photography. And she had a lot of skills in photography. She does. And there are many people that have actually seen a portrait photography that practice this. And they're kind of used to it, and it's just lazy photography. Everything is, every shot is bracketed, every pose is bracketed, and everything is shot in continuous high. So it's not that she or, or other people, and there are tons of people exactly like her, are actually shooting that much, but they're practicing blind, what I call blind squirrel and Rambo photography. You know, the premise of the blind squirrel is that a blind squirrel eventually will find an acorn, just like a broken clock is twice a day. Uh, you know, Rambo, you know, you strap on the gun, you stick in a 100-round drum magazine, you start spraying the woods and praying that you're going to hit something. That's something that's spoken about in combat uh, combat defense as far as, you know, sticking your... Uh, even now, soldiers are only giving a three-round bursts uh, that go to Iraq and Afghanistan. Their full auto, except for some elite forces, doesn't even exist for the combat soldier. They're only given three-round bursts, so... The reason for that is there's an extreme proclivity, just as it's applicable to weaponry, is applicable in photography, that someone is going to bracket and throw it in continuous high, and they're going to spray and pray, and they're going to take one shot about a hundred or whatever it is. So she destroyed her shutter, and I blessed the Canon camera that the shutter went for two and a half times what it was rated for. It was an expensive Canon 
I forget which model it was, but it nearly reached 600,000 clicks, or very close to it, 550-something. But, you know, this sort of douchebag photography belies the fact of what you're trying to create. I mean, time is money. And someone recently told me about the Ansel Adams uh, zone system uh, information that I was posting. They said, well, you know, you can expose for your highlights, you can pull it out and post. Well, if you're going to take a nice portrait shot and you're going to choose the best compositional shot out of those and you've got three or four photos... Uh, to edit and post-processing, that's not a big deal. But if you're taking a lot of photographs, especially action or things where they can't, you know, you can't miss it. You know, you blow your highlights, they're blown. Nothing is going to retrieve, you know, the highlights on a shot that's missed. And uh, the point of this is, is to actually use the own system to put it into practice, but then, just like your camera, to forget it. Okay, the same thing with all professional athletes is that you learn something that's seemingly complex, you apply it, and then it becomes muscle memory in your mind, or in their case, it's actual physical muscle memory. But the zone system becomes a muscle memory so that when you're looking at your shot, you have the confidence of Achilles, you have the confidence of Hercules, that you have nailed the shot, and at very, very most, other than for aesthetic uh, um, editing afterwards, you know you've nailed the shot, okay? And some of the pictures, of, like the last contest, was challenging, and rightly so. I mean, you talk about a really decent exposure, both compositionally, but exposure-wise, where 85% of the shot is black, and, you know, 10 or 15% of the shot illuminated, getting those uh, mid-tones in your, uh, your tonal range, your seven-stop tonal range, on uh, the 11, uh, the 11 stop range of uh, Ansel Adams' zone system is difficult because you're just talking about taking this entire scene and only exposing this, for example. This is a person's face, the sea urchin, actually, as far as its texture and uh, its, uh, its tonal quality is actually a perfect uh, analog for human skin, believe it or not. You've got to look at this image in a um, black and gray fashion. And if I were to expose this, I'd have to know what to do that. And if you, what to expose for. And uh, some of you will take multiple shots, and you've told me this, and it turns out that all your midtones, and the midtones on this sea urchin, for example, would be everything over here just cresting past where the light's breaking right here. Your even tonal ranges, your, your five stops of texture, are right over here, and they're all muddied up. They're present, but barely but they're muddy. And so the, the, the principle of understanding Ansel Adams' zone system is the advantage that you understand what the hell is going on and you can focus on making a great image instead of, uh, you know, pissing about and engaging in douchebag photography. I've seen more than a few portrait uh, photographers and uh, the one lady that just blew through her shutter in a little over a year and she's highly acclaimed, but she's basically taking continuous high movies and each shot, you know, bracket is bracketed, seven shots, and she destroyed the shutter. Yeah, I mean, she wasn't working that much, but she destroyed the camera, which is no big deal. I mean, that's a tax write-up. It's not about that, but it's about spraying and praying. And, you know, this is an aspect of, you know, you think it's humorous, but, you know, it's really serious. When you talk about douchebag photography, it's like, well... Are you going to take every shot and bracket the piss out of it? Are you going to throw your camera in continuous high and bracket? And then spray and pray? So you got blind squirrel photography and Rambo photography. Okay? This is what's going on. I mean, the only real advantage of understanding this zone system is that you understand the tonal range of texture that you are trying to get. You're trying to translate what is in your mind to the back of that image sensor and ultimately to the SD card or the compact flash card. Okay. What you see here is what you see with your eyeballs. But as I've told you before, what is important in advanced photography or professional photography is seeing what is not there. You know it exists there potentially and with your skills you're able to manifest it just like as a sculptor sees a giant block of stone and someone goes well, you know, it's just a big block of stone. What are you going to do with that piece of crap? Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to carve a, uh, a statue to last 10,000 years that people will throw into a museum. And, and, you know, like some of the ancient Greek and Roman sculptors. I mean, you're seeing what is not there. The same thing with the stone sculpture and uh, what separates out uh, capturing the moment from professional photography and uh, advanced amateur photography 
you know, is uh, you know leaving this douchebag photography behind. You can sit, if you want to throw your camera and bracket every shot, or you want to open up each and every shot. I mean, it's just too much trouble. You know, if you got a portrait shot, and uh, you want to. Uh, you know, you've only got four or five shots that are compositionally beautiful, and you bracket it, and it's like, well, this one's closest, I can edit it, and you know, time is money, okay, especially if you're a working photographer, so I'm going to bracket it, boom, 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 I've got it, there's the shot, I'm going to push it or pull it a little bit, and I'm going to crop it, and boom, print it out, sell it, move on to the but you know you're not going to advance that way you're not going to advance your skills and you're not going to advance your creativity in creating an image you're going to be capturing a moment you're going to be relying on photoshop and the continuous high shooting of your camera to capture the correct composition of what is there pre presumably action or something else but also you know the the compositional nature of what is potentially there that you have to extract and manipulate in Photoshop. Now I'm gonna have to unfortunately make a second video. Excuse me for flapping my lips so much, but this is unfortunately going to be a four-part series. Uh, the next video will be much more salient, and I'm going to get down. I'm going to show you what I'm exposing for on this. But you can create your own scene at home. Now uh, I'll let you download this image, and you can print it out yourself. And you can create this uh, your own scene like this, and in less than five minutes, and sit back about like 15 feet, like I'm doing, and I'm going to tell you what I'm doing behind the camera and what I'm exposing for in the next little video and it will be very salient and if you just apply this technique a little bit then you're going to have the confidence of Hercules okay analogously because you know what you're metering for you know how it's going to come out you're going to know the tonal range of capture and uh, what you can pull or put, not everybody has an Icon D750 or some other camera that they can pull four stops of shadows out of, okay? Not everybody has the same camera. It's like, well, you know, I got an Icon D750 and uh, I can uh, extract four stops of shadows. And, it, it, do you know the steps involved in doing that? You know, and if you got a lot of shots that you want to make perfect, I mean, do, do you want to do that to every shot? Or do you want to get it right the first time on the back of the image sensor and, and uh, capture it on the card? Uh, I'm sorry, but the time is money, and I'd kind of like to get it as close to perfect, you know, at time of capture. And anybody that argues otherwise, um, you know, I'll, I'll flatly say that you're a fool. You know, you just are a fool. Um, now, if it's some sort of a fast action shot and you can't get it, and you're going to pray that, you know, you're going to throw your camera into bracketing mode and spray and pray, you know, that's a necessity. But on still life stuff like this and portraiture, and, you know, and basically 85% landscape, portraiture, you know, everything else. You know, take the time, get it right. This is about expanding your skills. And this will immediately become muscle memory into your mind that you'll understand and comprehend what it is that you're metering for, what it is you're exposing for, depending on the compositional value of the aesthetics of the image you are trying to create. Because all you see here is the moment. Okay, this is what my eyes see, this is what your eyes see. And this is meaningless crap. This is point and shoot photography. Well, I see this and this, and I'm going to shoot here, and I'm going to pray that that comes out, or I'm going to edit it. And you know, this is moment photography. Okay? You can bracket it and spray and pray it, you know, engage in blind squirrel photography and Rambo photography and engage in douchebag photography because the uh, digital cameras have made us lazy you know just as everything else in life has made us lazy I mean I'm one to talk I mean I'm fat and uh, you know certainly nowhere near a great shape as I should be <laughs> or I used to be so I'm nobody to talk but uh, this is about advancing your skills okay you can perfect them or you can perfect them and advance them. So let's click, quickly move on to the next video and we'll wrap this up quickly and then uh, the salient point will be made. And uh, considering the Ansel Adams zone system is an incredibly huge topic, the fact that this only takes up four videos is very salient and very condensed, contrary to what you may think. Thank you.